Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're once again looking at second generation Ryzen performance, but this time with tweaked memory sub timings. And this is a benchmark that many of you have been requesting over the past few weeks, so we've decided it's about time we looked into it. Before we start tuning our DDR4 memory though, this video has been sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website or online store, make it with Squarespace. And for more information, please check the link in the video description. Right, so tuning memory timings on the Ryzen platform, that's been a thing since AMD first released their Zen architecture, roughly this time last year. And we have seen plenty of evidence that it really helps gaming performance, uh, bumps those frame rates up quite nicely. But with memory support for the first gen Ryzen CPUs already a bit sketchy, we've often felt those results were somewhat misleading. Over the past year, for example, we have had many dozen first generation Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 processors land on our test bed, and many of them have struggled with DDR4 3200 memory. That said though, in the past 12 months, memory support has improved, and I'd say that most of those improvements have come via the way of BIOS updates. Though we are seeing more Ryzen optimized DDR4 memory hit shelves as well. It's also important to note that a specific kind of memory IC is required to support the aggressively tuned memory timings uh, required to maximize Ryzen's performance. So it's not something you can achieve with old DDR4 memory. For this, you will require modules featuring Samsung's BDI ICs, and these only come on certain eight gigabyte DDR4 memory modules. This is premium memory, the best of the best, so it's not cheap, and while no DDR4 memory is cheap right now, this stuff is particularly expensive. For example, 16 GB DDR4-3200 kits featuring two 8 GB modules start at $170 US. You can purchase G-Skills Trident Z F4-3200 C16D 16GT ZKW. Man, these things are worse than monitor names. Uh, you can get that kit for the $170 price tag. However, the Samsung BDI version known as the F4-3200 C14D 16GT ZKY which operates at much tighter timings at CL14 versus CL16, that kit costs $200 US. So it's $30 US more or an 18% increase in price. And while that might not sound like a huge amount, considering how expensive memory already is, tacking another $30 US on certainly does hurt. Out of the box, the CL14 memory allows for better gaming performance, and while it's possible to tune certain timings for better results with both memory types, you can be far more aggressive with the CL14 Samsung BDI memory. Circling back to what I mentioned earlier, one of Ryzen's biggest issues since release has been memory compatibility, and to try and combat that, AMD's had to sacrifice a lot of performance by loosening timings to improve compatibility for a wider range of memory modules. I touched on why memory frequency and more importantly latency impacts Ryzen's performance so heavily in a recent video exploring IPC performance. If you missed that video, in short, AMD's Infinity Fabric used to connect the CCX modules is tied to the memory clock rate. So faster memory reduces core to core latency when talking between CCX modules. The Ryzen 7 1800X, for example, features two CCX modules, each houses four cores. Those four cores within a CCX module have a quarter core latency of about 40 nanoseconds, and this latency isn't influenced by memory speed. However, quarter core communication between CCX modules is dramatically slower. With DDR4 2400 memory, you're looking at a delay of about 140 nanoseconds. That's around three and a half times longer. It is possible to reduce that delay to about 110 nanoseconds with DDR4 3200 memory, and naturally it's reduced further with faster, lower latency memory. So far, we've found that the newer, second generation Ryzen CPUs pack a more robust memory controller than the first generation Ryzen CPUs, and AMD's official spec also suggests that this is indeed the case, as the official memory spec has increased from DDR4 2666 to DDR4 2933. That said though, you will require a high quality motherboard, likely featuring a six layer PCB to take advantage of the higher frequency memory. Initially through trial and error, we started tuning the sub timings on the ASRock X470 Tai Chi Ultimate, and we were seeing some seriously good gains. During that testing though, the ASUS ROG Crosshair 7 Hero arrived and we put the memory tuning on hold to benchmark the Ryzen 5 2600 using that ASUS motherboard. 
During that testing, I stumbled upon the memory presets within the DRAM timing control menu. And here ASUS has provided a number of profiles for those using Samsung BDI memory. The best of these profiles were created by Finnish overclocker, The Stilt. And here we have 3200, 3333, and 3466 configurations. Having seen how well the Stilt's 3466 profile worked with my G-Skill Sniper X DDR4 3400 memory, this is what I decided to test. So the following benchmarks feature the Ryzen 5 2600 overclocked to 4.2 GHz using the standard extreme memory profile for the G-Skill Flare X DDR4 3200 memory. Then using the same memory, I've retested twice using the Stilt's 3466 profile at 3400, and then once again with the Stilt's 3200 profile. For comparison, I've thrown in my Core i5 8600K and 8700K results, and both those CPUs are running at 5.2 GHz, along with the 7700K at 5 GHz. The Ryzen 5 1600 at 4 GHz has also been included, along with the Core i5 8400, which can't be overclocked, and therefore it isn't. All those processes were tested using G-Skill's Flare X DDR4 3200CL14 memory. Okay, let's get into the results. First up, we have the sustained memory bandwidth performance, and here the tweaked DDR4 3200 profile increased the memory bandwidth by 4%, while the tweaked DDR4 3400 configuration offered 10% more bandwidth than the standard configuration. For applications that aren't really memory bandwidth sensitive or even memory latency sensitive, we see no impact at all. The Cinebench R15 single and multi-threaded performance was basically identical regardless of the memory setup. The video editing score was increased ever so slightly. Here the tuned 3200 memory improved performance by 3%, while the DDR4 3400 profile offered a 4% performance jump. Not really noteworthy gains, but performance is clearly improved beyond the margin of error. Again, we see pretty minor gains, this time in the PCMark 10 gaming physics test. Uh, not really much worth noting here. The tune configurations were slightly faster, but really nothing to get excited about. Uh, basically, no real gains were seen in the Excel test either. A handbrake saw no real performance gains. The same could also be said about the Corona benchmark. Then in Blender, the 2600 took just 27 seconds to complete the render time, and again, memory timings and frequency had no impact on performance. Finally, the last application benchmark is V-Array, and again, nothing to see here. So the applications were a bit of a bust. Let's move on to gaming. Well, this is very interesting. Here the overclocked Ryzen 5 2600 went from 115 FPS on average with the DDR4 3200 memory using the standard extreme memory profile to 120 FPS with the tweak timings. And that's a reasonable 4% increase, though we did see a 6% increase for the 1% low result. However, it was when we went from the tuned DDR4 3200 memory to the tuned DDR4 3400 memory that we saw a further 7% performance boost. And now the R5 2600 is faster than the 8600K clocked at 5.2 GHz. That's an incredibly impressive result. Interestingly though, we see no real gains when testing with Assassin's Creed Origins, and this title always provides odd results. Even with the higher quality preset used to reduce the GPU bottleneck, this doesn't do much to help the Ryzen 5 2600 out. And while we do often see strange results with Assassin's Creed Origins, so this just seems to be another one of those strange results. Moving on to Battlefield 1 though, we do find when using the ultra quality settings that the R5 2600 with the tuned DDR4 3400 memory can find the limits of the GTX 1080 Ti at least as far as the average frame rate is concerned. It's still 6% slower than the 8600K for the 1% low result, and 8% slower than the 8700K. Perhaps more notable is the fact that the 2600's 1% low performance was increased by 13% when using the faster memory. The gains seen in Far Cry 5 are a little less impressive, but even so, the tweaked DDR4 3400 memory configuration did allow the R5 2600 to match the Core i5-8400, so certainly not a bad result there. Finally, we looked at gaming performance with Vermintide 2, and here the tweaked DDR4-3200 configuration offered a 7% increase in performance, while we saw a 10% jump when using the tuned DDR4-3400 memory. Despite those gains though, the 2600 was still 7% slower than the 8600K and 11% slower than the 8700K. Though, again, keep in mind those CPUs are running at 5.2 GHz, which is about 4% higher than what most chips will achieve. Okay, so some very interesting results there, but please note this is just a very small sample of the gaming tests that we have to come. So, 
consider those benchmarks uh, somewhat of a preview because soon we will have finished a head-to-head -head comparison between the Ryzen 5 2600 and Core i5 8400 in over 30 games. Uh, for those of you wondering, the Ryzen 5 processor will be tested in its stock out-of-the-box trim. Uh, that means using DDR4 2933 memory. Uh, and then we will also be including a 4.2 GHz all-core overclock using the tweaked DDR4 3400 profile. So that should be interesting. And then the Core i5 8400, that will be tested using the stock DDR4 2666 memory on a B360 motherboard. What we've seen here though are some seriously good gains in a number of games. The results seen when testing with Battlefield 1, Vermintide 2 and Ash of the Singularity in particular were very impressive, while Far Cry 5 was also quite good. We were still quite limited in Assassin's Creed Origins though, this title has always been a bit strange with Ryzen CPUs. For applications though, the aggressive memory timings have next to no impact on performance and for the most part the memory and core latency doesn't really impact these types of workloads. The loose sub-memory timing seem to really only impact gaming performance, and tightening them up as we've done in this test really improves things for Ryzen. Unfortunately though, I should note that this isn't something everyone can do as you will require expensive BDI memory, and as such you won't be able to achieve these results with lesser memory. This does make testing exclusively with manually configured memory timings very misleading in my opinion. It is something we'll start to include when overclocking Ryzen, but those results really need to be coupled with a stock memory profile as well. As good as it is seeing Ryzen achieving such impressive performance boosts in games, let's not get too carried away with these results. The most affordable Samsung BDI modules that I'm aware of retail for about $200 US and that is for a 16GB kit, and the Intel processors can achieve performance shown in this video with $160 US memory, so that is a $40 US saving for the Intel processors. If you're going to be realistic about this, you have to take that cost into consideration. The Core i5-8400 costs $180 US, 16 gigabytes of memory is $160 US, and you can get a decent B360 motherboard for $80 US, so all up $420 US for that platform. The Ryzen 5 2600 costs $200 US, then the memory is $200 US, and assuming you can get the most out of this memory on a B350 motherboard, then it's $80 for the motherboard. The Ryzen build now costs at least $60 US more, which admittedly isn't a lot, but the big draw card for AMD has been the fact that you do get more stuff for less money. Oh, and I almost forgot, you will want to throw an additional $20 at the build for a decent tower style air cooler if you want to hit that 4.2 GHz overclock and achieve the same level of performance shown in this video. It's also worth noting that the Core i5-8400 and Ryzen 5 2600 at 4.2 GHz, they did still trade blows in the gaming benchmarks, so it's not like Ryzen just brushes the Core i5 aside with the faster, more expensive memory. But if you're looking to brush aside the competition, then I suggest checking out Squarespace's all-in-one platform. It allows you to quickly and easily create a beautiful hassle-free website. There's nothing to install, patch or upgrade ever. You don't need to know anything about web coding stuff like PHP, CSS, HTML. They're all just acronyms for things you don't need to worry about if you build with Squarespace. Their beautiful designer templates make creating a powerful online identity easy. Each template is a starting point for a wide range of projects, whether you're pursuing a side hustle or promoting your main gig. And Squarespace also provides award-winning 24-7 customer support. So go to squarespace.com forward slash harbor unboxed, single word, no space, and start your free trial today to receive 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button for us, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work with your Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.